All right. Well, happy uh, Wednesday morning to you all as uh, chunks are being sent at me from the weed eaters. <laughs> uh, I'm running with the Ulanzi G9-4 case now uh, on the uh, GoPro 11. So you can see it there. Uh, G9-4 in reverse in a mirror. Um, and my broken lens corner here. Uh, I've got the audio adapter plugged in. I don't know if the audio is working. If it is, you're hearing nothing but uh, uh, noise converters out here. Uh, weed eaters, uh, lawnmowers, leaf blowers, and my very dirty navy. Anyway, I'm headed out for a work commute. Uh, i got to go to the warehouse and uh, get past the noise here. Oh, feels good to get moving. It's like 62 degrees, uh, 61, 62, but it's quite humid. So sweating sweating in my jacket uh yeah so this is just a trial today uh to see how this uh, new vlogging case works and hopefully the uh microphone adapter is doing what it's supposed to do otherwise there is either no audio or a ton of wind noise right now <laughs> uh we shall find out man these tires feel funky af i don't know what the deal is i air them up and they still feel like shiza I don't know why. Uh, I've got to get these things replaced. I've been so busy with other projects and time and money has been tight, so I'm uh, a little behind on all my moto projects that I had hoped to have spinning already for this fall. Uh, I just haven't had the bandwidth to get them done. So, tires are coming up, and I'm not waiting on that last guy because he's just going too slow. Yeehaw! Made it! Um, so, I got tires for all the bikes pretty much uh, that need to be done. My CB500X uh, is pretty much done after my last uh, 21, 2200 mile trip, whatever it was. Uh, then uh, my Rebel is pretty much done. It's got 11K on the rear. My CB500X has got almost that much. I think it's got 10K on the rear uh, on a Pilot 4, so it's pretty much done. Uh, I need to get tires for the uh, PCX 150, at least the rear tire, because that's toast. Uh, need tires for this. What else needs tires? Man, I need to retire all the way around. Retire. Hey, don't you do it? Uh, da, 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 what else? Uh, I want to get into the Navi projects this fall. Uh, I still need to find a suitable wide bando two sensor. Uh, I've been looking at the one from Rolling Wrench. It looks really cool, and it seems to have a pretty fast uh, update because, like, this thing is stumbling right now, about to die. I gotta rejet this. Um, it's got a, a little OLED, or you know, at least a backlit uh, LED display on it, as well as a, a color ring for your uh, AFR. Uh, pretty cool, and it seems to be pretty fast acting. So, it'll either be that or the. Uh, what is it, the AEM uh, O2 meter? I forget which model it is. I'll throw a picture of it up here. Either one of those uh, will be pretty good uh, for on-bike. Uh, the one thing I do like about the AEM version is it has a data logging port, so you can use it with uh, dynos, or at least you can uh, capture the logs off of it. I don't know if it has log storage built into the gauge. I kind of doubt that. No, it would be neat if it does, uh, but at the very least, I could hook up a small uh, data logger to it. I don't know if it's going to be RS-232 or 485 or some other proprietary signaling protocol, but I should be able to capture that with a little microcontroller, uh, like an Arduino uh, with a storage card or perhaps a little Raspberry Pi or something like that, just to record uh, engine data. Uh, and it would be nice to tie that into uh, RPM and load, but there's really no way to figure out load without a throttle position sensor or you know some kind of a dial indicator over here on the grip. I wouldn't mind getting a different you know gauge. Maybe I could do... Uh, I'm thinking about a Trail Tech. Uh, the Trail Tech Vapor. That would be pretty cool to put up here uh, across the handlebar bridge. Uh, you know, replace the whole gauge would be even cooler, but uh, just, you know, right in there would be okay. Uh, and that would give uh, speed, temperature, RPM, all kinds of stuff. And with the Trail Tech, you can get different configurations of it, different sensors. Uh, it's kind of a plug-and-play, you know, uh, 
a rector set kind of a gauge if you want it to be uh, so you can get uh, cylinder head uh, oil you can get all kinds of stuff back to the point uh, I want to get into this uh, Navi project and rejet the carburetor and start farting around with it and put a different uh, hey hit that wood uh, put a different exhaust on here uh, chances are when I change this exhaust it's gonna lean the bike out because it'll be breathing more freely, which means more air, thereby reducing the uh, density of the fuel charge, you know, or diluting it a little bit, so thinning out that mixture. Right now, it's definitely rich. There's no two ways about it. Uh, and that's why I wanna get the O2 sensor is uh, to kind of quantify my nose readings. Idle, it's just eye-wateringly rich. It's so rich, it's crazy. And every time you decelerate, coming down to a stop, and you, you know, if you if you're carrying a wake behind you, you get your own exhaust plume uh, <laughs> as you stop, and you're like, oh, God, who's running a lawnmower? So this thing is just rich, rich, rich. Now I don't know if it's rich uh, in the upper RPMs, uh, you know, at mid and high throttle. But again, that's what the the O2 sensor will help that out a little bit. So it would just be nice to have some stats to put together and round up the project kind of concisely and scientifically. That way I don't get all these people, oh, you're doing it wrong. Even if I don't change out the exhaust right away, I will uh, definitely reset my air fuel screw and try to lean this thing out at idle just so it doesn't stumble and die uh, at idle. Because as it sits right now, I can run this thing hard for 10 minutes. I mean, well beyond normal operating temperature or full operating temperature and just, you know, blast it for 10 miles, 10 minutes, whatever, uh, come to a stop and it will still die. Uh, it doesn't die in warmer weather as much as cold weather like this. So again, that just kind of points to the mixture is way rich at idle. I'm kind of guesstimating that it's running at around 10, five to one. Uh, right now, which is really, really rich. Hell, it might even be down in the nines. It smells just crazy, crazy rich. And I was chatting with uh, some of my viewers on the Discord channel, uh, or Discord server. Hey, no footer. All right. Um, we're talking about the fact that this thing doesn't seem to have a catalytic converter on it. Now, I've seen references to, yes, it does have a cat, I can't find any evidence that's got a catalytic converter in it. Normally, they've all got a characteristic smell. When you first start them up, uh, the rich start is going to make them smell like lacquer, uh, you know, like paint thinner lacquer or something for a few seconds, and then they get a more... I don't even know how to describe the smell. You all know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's kind of a... not a sulfur smell, but it's a, a chemical smell, almost like chlorine or bleach or something uh, as a start to warm up and burn off all those extra hydrocarbons. And then when they're fully warm, they've got very little smell to the exhaust at all. That's typical, and that's what the emissions controls and uh, emissions scrub are supposed to do. This doesn't have any of that. <laughs> Nothing. None. Zip. diddly doo da nada. Uh, it's just rich all the time. You can smell it running. You can smell it at idle. You can smell it when you stop. It's like, ugh. It's dumping almost as much fuel out the exhaust as it's burning. And I'm sure that's why the fuel economy on it is so poor. It's just not jetted properly, not running right. And I'm at sea level. Keep that in mind. I am at sea level. So uh, for people at higher elevations, it would be even worse. With this bike, anyway. So if I ever take this bike on a long road trip, you know, cross country, whatever, I will definitely have to uh, rejet the carb or get a different carburetor for it or carry another factory carburetor and these aren't that expensive I think the carbs are 85 bucks or something and that's dirt from Honda so you know I could carry one that's jetted kind of lean uh, I could have another one that's properly tuned for sea level and just swap them out it would be faster and a little bit more deterministic than uh, pulling it off of there to rejet it you know Rejetting, you've got more variables involved. You got your uh, disassembly, all that nonsense. So, it might be just easier to have two carbs. Now, what would be really cool is to get one of those uh, electron. I think they're it's called electron carbs. I've had them on bikes decades ago. Uh, I think they got their start in uh, aeronautics uh, with uh, aviation 
engines and carburetors, but uh, they're fully adjustable for altitude and flow and all kinds of stuff. They're pretty neat. Not cheap, I'm sure. Uh, the bike that I had, or two bikes that I had uh, that had this carburetor came with it. I didn't buy it myself. I learned how to adjust it and tune it and all that. It's pretty easy. But uh, I think buying one outright, they're gonna be expensive, several hundred bucks. Uh, I don't wanna wait behind you. So yeah, Navi projects, so hopefully this fall, this winter as things get cold. I would like to take either this or my little C3 out on uh, a moto camping trip again this fall. Probably a little bit further than Stephen F. Austin, which is my close uh, local park over here, only you know, 35, 40 miles away, whatever it is. Uh, I would probably go further, maybe up to uh, Lake Livingston or something like that. Just take the back highways. That's, uh, that's a good two, two and a half hour ride on a normal machine. On this, it would be longer. <laughs> my C3, it would be a lot longer. Well, I don't know, not a lot longer. Longer than this. So, the little C3 is still pending. I should have that tank sometime soon. End of this week, beginning of next week is what I'm hoping. Uh, my back order notice that I got from Partzilla said that it would be shipping on October 29th or 30th, something like that. So that's coming right up. And then I've also got the Silverwing project uh, that's been sitting on my patio, torn apart now for a few weeks. I need to put a cover over that thing because it's just getting dirty and rained on. It's under the gazebo, but you know, still getting dirty. Uh, I started on that thinking I was just gonna do a quick thing to it and put in new uh, turn signal bulbs. Uh, and as those projects always do, it spiraled out of control. So the Silverwing, uh, that would be a good one to get together, you know, put back on the road for this fall. Uh, it needs tires and a couple of other things. I've gone through the laundry list in previous vlogs, so I won't do it again here, but it's got a handful of things that need done to it to make it roadworthy, at least for my comfort level. Uh, it'd be good to take that thing out on a good long road trip, maybe, you know, across the state somewhere, find a remote park somewhere to go winter hammock camping or something like that. That'd be fun. Of course, that thing's cheating in my book. <laughs> it's, it's a road sofa, man. It's a great one-up touring machine. They'll go, you know, across the country in the blink of an eye. It's no problem. 80, 90 miles an hour on the highway all day long without breaking a sweat. If you keep the speeds under 65, uh, it gets 54, 55 miles to the gallon pretty reliably. It's got a, I want to say it's a four and a half gallon tank. 4.6, something like that. It might be five, I can't remember. It's got a good tank on it. You can get 250 miles of range out of it usually before stopping to feed it again. Uh, I like that machine. I just don't like commuting with it in town. It's a little bit too porky for that. A little on the heavy side, 540 pounds or something like that. So pretty heavy scoot. Garage full of projects, man. Just got to find the time or the money, and usually those things are uh, mutually exclusive. When you have the time, you don't have the money. When you have the money, you don't have the time because you spent the time making the money. Hamster wheel, give it a spin. So I'm still uh, only at around 1,300 miles on the Navi. Probably uh, bump that up to whew, at least 2,500 over the next uh, short term here. I'll be using it for commuting a lot. Uh, I thought my son was going to be using it for commuting to school because the CB500F uh, has been down for a little while. Uh, clutch cable is about to go bank. It's uh, all frayed and just barely holding together. And of course he's been running that thing into the ground and not really maintaining it all that well. Uh, so it's got a couple things that need done on it. Sitting in my garage waiting patiently as are most of them. Um, so I thought he would be using this to fart around on. It's a little bit more frugal on fuel. Not by a lot, but a little. Um, but, you know, he's 18, almost 19, and it's not macho enough. <laughs> it doesn't go fast enough. And I sold the FZ6R, and that's what he had been riding uh, for a while instead of the 500F. So now he's back to the car. He doesn't want to doesn't wanna stoop to a uh, mini moto mayhem. I've just gotten past that, man. I don't... I could give two shits about macho. Who cares, man? Ride what's fun. 
get out there and enjoy it. Try not to get run over by these uh, oblivious, aggressive cagers. And just enjoy it, man. It's, I just find it satisfying to ride these smaller, more efficient bikes. <laughs> Navi, efficient, that's uh, almost an oxymoron these days, but I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> it can improve, I'm sure, with a better fueling. Holy 700 million Powerball, Batman. I'd like to get that. That would make a little change in my lifestyle. <laughs> Actually, I probably wouldn't. Probably still do the same shit that I do now. I'd <laughs> just do more of it. Uh, we got a problem. I don't want to be in the back of that line. Somebody's going to hit me because they are clueless. Shall I split and uh, annoy everybody? Why not? Pardon me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me, pardon me, pardon me. Coming through. I do apologize. Oh, so sorry. I would really like to get past this fat boy. Oh, 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 he made it. Look how long that light's been green and nobody's even rolling yet, man. That light's been green for a good six, seven seconds and people were just starting to roll as I came up to those last four cars. It's crazy. Reaction time of your average sea sponge. Watch out. It's a mass migration. Man, there's so many projects I want to do. I just don't have the time. Uh, I'm, I'm not an artistic person. I never have been. I don't uh, art, uh, at least as far as organic art, you know, drawing things like that. I can't do. But I like to build uh, anything mechanical, geometric. I'm, I'm all over that. And the one thing that I never have taught myself or taken classes or whatever is uh, metalworking. I've always been interested in that, and I've just never made the time to learn it. Uh, I want to get into welding and uh, machining and, you know, cutting pipe and tube and all that stuff, preferably tube, you know, get into frame building and all that, because I've got a bunch of projects that I would really love to do, uh, custom motorcycle stuff, go-karts, uh, kid toys, ride-ons, all kinds of stuff. I've got all these things running around in my brain. Uh, one of the channels that I just love watching the guys are amazing and their, their channel has just gone crazy is uh, grind hard plumbing oh man those guys are my heroes they've got that get it done attitude they just don't care uh, it's not always perfect but they do fantastic work anyway uh, I mean everything they do is just so top-notch I love it full fabrication whether it's frames or you know you name it they do it all it's amazing I love it and they build stupid motorized vehicles, and that's what I like. <laughs> Anything that's got an engine, wheels, you can do something dumb with it. Uh, hell, it doesn't even have to have wheels. They do, they've do. they done tracked vehicles like uh, snowmobile, uh, motopeds, whatever you want to call them. Uh, basically, a snowmobile on a track, single track, motorcycle front end. That's awesome. Building some custom bikes. <laughs> what started the thought was uh, turning this into a Franken Navi and putting a, a Helix or Reflex 250 uh, engine on the back of it, replacing the front suspension with something real instead of these pogo sticks. Uh, and of course, at least a front disc brake because you would need more stop to match that go. That would be fun. Probably have enough power to almost wheelie this little thing. <laughs> I guess it depends on how long you make the wheelbase after the uh, swing arm uh, adapter section, you know, back in the back. That would be cool. That's been my goal uh, for the warehouse for a while. I just, again, I don't, either don't have the money or don't have the time, one or the other, um, to uh, finish cleaning this place out and uh, turn it into my man cave and buy some welding equipment and all that kind of stuff uh, and I would need machine tools and some other stuff to do the kind of fabrication that I'm talking about doing you know you need tables and jigs and tools and tools and tools and more tools I've got power and space and everything that I need here it's just a matter of finding the right tools and then learning how to use them because I don't know squat I mean I know basic stuff but I don't know much about uh machining and all that, so I'd have to uh, hire a friend. Hey, nice car. Uh, I'd have to uh, find somebody that knows how to do it and feed him, give him some beer. 
What is rattling? I hear something rattling on this thing. It's driving me bad shit. Anyway, I've arrived. Thanks for tagging along. I uh, shall catch up with you all later this afternoon. I'm going to be here at the warehouse for a bit. Uh, damn, they found me. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit here at the warehouse uh, this morning, uh, grab my truck, go over to a client site, pick up a bunch of old equipment that needs to be sanitized and refurbished and all that good stuff, uh, and then uh, come back here do some more work. I'll probably swap this out for the Super Cub today. I need to get the Super Cub running because the battery's flat, but I've got a jumper and some other stuff in here, so I might be able to uh, fire that thing up. Uh, <laughs> the trick with the Super Cub is when the battery goes totally flat, you're stuck uh, because it's got the... Uh, smart key system and you can't get that uh, smart key to engage to unlock the center column which in turn enables the ignition so you've at least got to be able to jump that system uh, to get the smart key unlocked and then you can actually push start the cub but when the battery's totally flat you're stuck so I've got a battery tender lead on the bottom of it that I will um, hook up a charger to uh, and hope it doesn't blow my fuse <laughs> otherwise i got to pull it apart so anyway I'll catch you all later All right, everybody. Well, welcome back to my Wednesday evening now. Just about sunset. I'll be riding into the sunset tonight, but <laughs> I've strategically waited until it's just about on the horizon, so I don't have to burn out my retinas. Uh, I tried getting the little Super Cub running. I was going to video some of that, but it was a painful process. Um, I could get it to take over, but it would not start. Uh, the battery was just too dead. So this is an interesting test. I'll have to try it again in the future disconnecting the battery and seeing if the cub can be push started uh, once you know the system has been primed and all that uh, mine has been sitting here in the warehouse now for at least two months uh, the battery was already getting weak it's three years old now um, over three years old almost four um, and I noticed the last couple times I wrote it that the battery was getting a little bit weak so it's just finally dead it's flat uh, and it's so flat that it won't uh, engage anything and you know, I you, you can't unlock the smart key system or anything so I hooked up my battery tender lead and I was trying to get it to uh, uh, push started uh, you know I hook up the battery tender lead uh, energizes the system to where I can unlock the smart key on it but uh, it was not enough to uh, uh, keep the system alive enough to where the thing would run and there are mosquitoes out here like crazy Ugh. anyway I gotta get rolling so I'm riding the Navi back home tonight I'm gonna bring a fresh battery from my uh, stock uh, in the garage uh, at home I've got a couple of uh, uh, two or three different sizes of the WPS lithium batteries Western Power Sports uh, and I think I've got one that's small enough that I can fit uh, into the cub ouchie that hurts um, they're making progress on that thing though because last time we saw it it had uh, no wheel and uh, f suspension was all banged up anyway um, so I'll bring a fresh battery and a charger uh, from the house and I'll see if I can uh, convince that uh, dead battery to come back to life but I think it's just spent it's too old the small power sports batteries like this uh if you get four years out of them, you're pretty lucky. Uh, and that's with constant use and maintenance to where they never really get low. Because uh, once they get low, it's kind of all she wrote. I'm already almost down to half a tank of fuel on this thing, just commuting in from home. It had a full tank in it when I left this morning. Crazy. fire going on up here too. I see a bunch of smoke on the horizon about three or four miles up it looks like. Maybe we'll get a look at that. It looks like I see emergency flashers on the uh, right hand side of the road up there through the intersection so we might have uh, fire crews or something sitting on the street. Okay we found it. This guy is at least at a, uh, I know these are, huh, doesn't look like these are in the this is a separate issue. This is complex is not on fire. Something further over there is on fire. I don't know what that is. What are they doing? <laughs> what is this? So whatever these ladder trucks are at, 
I think they miss they miss dispatched. Oh my god, that's crazy. So we got all these pumper trucks and everything here. There's nothing going on here. The smoke is up there. Can they not see the smoke? <laughs> Oops. Got more coming. Where are they? Coming from the other side. I'm gonna get up here and get a look at it. So this crew is getting ready to come out now. Man, that sucks. All right, everybody go, everybody go, everybody go. Go now or we're not getting out <laughs> for another five minutes. <laughs> Crazy. Let's chase some fire engines. As long as there's not more coming behind me. Yeah, so the structure fire is up here a mile plus away. It's been burning for a while. I mean, before I left my uh, warehouse, I saw the smoke. Yeah, it's right there. And they're trying to figure out how to get back to it. Let's see if we can see what it is. Yep, it's a, uh, it's a house fire. There's houses back there. Yikes, yep, house fire. Now we see all the emergency vehicles. I wonder how those uh, ladder trucks, pumper trucks got uh, miss dispatch. That's pretty bad. It's a mile away. And three or four of them pulled in there to the same spot. Oops, somebody goofed. Uh, and this guy's stuck. <laughs> I don't know if you guys could hear the crunching. He's wedged. Man, we got all kinds of buffoonery going on in Houston tonight. This guy's wedged uh, under the underpass. I heard his trailer going crunch. He's going to have to flatten his tires. 17 feet, 1 inch clearance, and uh, he must be a little over that. Yeah, he is stuck like Chuck. <laughs> Oops. delivering that overpass and ran out of gas. Here's your sign. I wonder if that audio came out. That'll be interesting. Because that was a very loud crunch as he was wedging himself in underneath that uh, underpass for the turnaround there. If he finds a blocker, somebody that can get behind him and you know clear out all the traffic, he could probably just let some air out of the tires on the trailer and uh, back it up. As long as he didn't do any damage to the bridge, he's probably okay. I'm sure he damaged the trailer. And accidents with lane closures. Man, it's a busy night in Houston. And after, uh, watch this guy. What are you doing there, fella? Um, after dark, it gets a whole lot worse. That's when the real crazies come out and start shooting everybody. I avoid going out at all uh, at you know dar after dark uh, here in Houston. I don't like driving or riding at night anyway. But uh, man, after about 10 p.m., there is just nothing good going on. <laughs> nothing that needs you out. That's for sure. Uh, only trouble and problems happening after 10 p.m. Hurry up and stop. Road Rage and Cagers. Competing with each other. Oh, I gotta get in front of you so I can stop. I'm in a hurry to wait. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, which lane is gonna go? Ruh, ruh. Uh, it's straight, people. No turn from this lane, jackass. Ugh. You know where you are. I'm sure it's not your first time through here. That's another thing that's just been rampant over the last really two years since COVID. Uh, everybody just decides, yeah, I'm just going to make any lane a turn lane. I don't give a shit about signs or right away. Eh. Three lanes, oh, I'll make a turn from the outermost lane across all the way to the left. There's no really almost zero traffic enforcement here in Houston for speeding or douchebaggery or anything else. It's crazy. It has definitely become the Wild West here. Fighting 
to be up in front just to sit there and wait. You go, kids. Red light, whole big queue of stop traffic, and they still want to do 70 miles an hour right up there to the stop. Genius in action, man. Absolute genius. One day, maybe I'll be that smart. Just sunset look at that everything is yellow orange and pink I thought the low light performance on the hero 11 is pretty good uh, compared to my 7 anyway Has pretty good low light. I do have to bump up the uh, exposure in Adobe Premiere. Uh, I'm not running raw color profile. I'm running the uh, GoPro, whatever it is, the medium, you know, or GoPro color uh, on this. Um, and that's what I was also running on my Hero 7s. Uh, but I've uh, turned up the, uh, the ISO settings to 3200 and uh, EV comp is negative one, so it, it helps with some situations, but uh, low light has always been pretty weak on the GoPros, uh, but this larger sensor that the Hero 11 has in it works pretty well. And what am I looking at? A bicycle? Yeah, bicycle. Well, that's a brave soul right there, man. At least you got a light, but I think I would pass on that opportunity. Dusk in Houston at rush hour. Mm, nah, not on a bicycle, thanks. You're just asking to be a road pancake. You become somebody's new hood ornament. So usually uh, for this amount of light right here, I bump up the uh, exposure to about 0.6, uh, an additional 0.6, so plus 0.6, uh, or maybe up to like 0.8. Uh, dark dark you know full black at night uh, I usually set 1.2 to 1.5 uh, and that seems to bring up just enough of the uh, the background to make it normal ish you know and not quite as sensitive as the human eye but pretty good I have noticed that the uh, video stabilization in low light is better, much better uh, than the uh, Hero 7. Because my Hero 7, like if I were on this road right here, just the, the bouncing around of the helmet and my brain getting bobbled around over these bumps, 
would cause the uh, Hero 7 to be very, very blocky, blurry. Uh, so it had a lot of trouble with the image stabilization. The 11 seems to do a lot better job at it. It seems like as long as there's an anchor for the video frame, something bright in the frame, uh, like on my Rebel, the uh, gauge down here is uh, fairly bright. So it's able to lock onto something to use for stabilization. This might not work so well. I don't know, I'll find out, Ugh. I'll find out in post. Uh, that's where the seven always struggled too. If there was no fairly bright object uh, that it could use as a, a reference, then it had issues. Well, home again, home again. Another day done, another commute gone and out of the way, reasonably uh, uneventful. Plenty of uh, D-bag cagers, but you know, that's how it goes. Big city. Big city, big problems. <laughs> Can't believe how many fires and weird stuff there was going on tonight, though. Anyway, I bid you all farewell. Thanks for tuning in, and I will uh, catch you... Uh, tomorrow. Uh, maybe get the little cub out on the road and give it some exercise if the uh, battery swap works out.